10 continues on News Talk 1010. The world's been telling me that I can't come in. So know what I know. Be you don't have to leave. Well, sir, you, honestly, God, you don't have to leave. There's Father Sun dynamic going on here. There's a what? <laughs> Father Sun dynamic. Okay. I'll stay out of the way. <laughs> That's, well, I understand. I'm just saying, you know, if you want to walk in and out, do we'll do whatever you have. I mean, this is as um, laid back as you're going to get here. So. What we and how could I forget you said we'd always grow together? And with this country, is this a CD or an EP or? This is an EP. This was my acoustic EP. In my first release. And is there a name to it? I just called it an acoustic EP. <laughs> it's uh, three songs. I did it at Canterbury. Okay. Um, one instrument and one vocal take. So about as stripped down as it can be. I wanted to uh, simulate sitting in front of you and playing. Okay, cool. And now there's just love and concern. Still got lots to learn. <coughs> and maybe that's why <coughs> you were the headphones. Okay. Time to play it seeds. Time to watch the them grow well. Who I am now, I became next to you. And if a man has got to stand on his own. Welcome back to the program. Uh, that is the uh, voice and the music of uh, J.P. Sachs. That's uh, Sachs with an E at the end of it. And of course, um, being a shell, it was I am J.P. I originally saw that Bill had booked you and I went, oh, good, a sax player. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did, too. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Uh, nice to meet you. You're a Toronto kid, huh? I'm a Toronto kid. And I say kid when I say that in, in I'm just going to move the mic a little bit closer there. How uh, old are you? You're a young man, so. I'm 20. I just turned 20. 20. Where did you grow up in Toronto? I grew up around Young and Shepherd mm -hmm. in my elementary school life, and then we moved up to King City uh, when I started middle school. Ah, uh, that's beautiful. Beautiful area. Yes, that's beautiful country. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. So this is uh, what we were listening to, that particular tune that came from uh, an acoustic uh, EP of yours. Just yes. what instrument, basically, would you say? Um, None at all. That's... Um, that track that you were hearing is just me playing and singing the piano. Yeah. And the other two songs on it are one guitar track and one vocal track. Okay, so uh, what got you down this path of uh, a musical career? It's a question I'm never entirely sure how to answer because I think my life as a musician started before I was a conscious individual. Mm -hmm. So I guess when I at whatever age when I started really thinking about what I wanted to do with my life I'd already been making music for most of it mm -hmm. so it seemed like a reasonable thing to continue to do come from a musical family I do um, my grandfather on my mom's and you can't side, lie because your dad's right behind you there. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> and that's why we had a conversation about whether he would be behind me taking pictures or in the other room oh. so you would say something like that oh. maybe yes or no oh. <laughs> well I have the power to throw a boat yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know, he he introduced me to Bill initially. Oh, cool! So, I I'm very grateful he gets to, to stay. Him. So anyway, I, I interrupted you. You're talking about your your grandfather. My grandfather mm -hmm. on, on my mother's side is um, a cellist, uh, a world renowned cellist. He's my hero. Um, I've learned more than I entirely understand from him as a musician and as an individual about how to live your life in terms of your commitment to others and commitment to the world of music. Mm -hmm. His name is Janos Starker um, and is a Grammy Award winning cellist, but more important than that, accomplishments that are tangible like that. I think what I'm most proud of is uh, how he dedicated his life to teaching. And he always felt most at home as a teacher, he spent over 50 years, maybe over 60 years teaching at Indiana University. And basically, Almost every cellist who has a position in a major symphony around the world at some point either studied with or took a master class with my grandfather. Mm -hmm. Something I'm really proud of. Yeah, that's quite amazing. Yeah. yeah. 
pretty good roots. Mm -hmm. But you don't play the cello. I actually did when I was when I was younger. When I was about eleven years old, I picked up the cello. But it was more of a mechanism to get to know my grandfather than. Mm. I'm not sure I ever really thought I'd continue as a cellist, but as soon as I picked it up, he took me under his arm, and there I was going with him to to his to IU for the classes. And when I stopped playing, um, two years later, we had already built a relationship, so it didn't matter too much. But it gave you a great background in, in just the uh, the basics and the uh, hardcore stuff you have to know to play. And, I think and so. Create. I moved I moved pretty fluidly from classical cello to jazz piano. Mm -hmm. singing the whole time and th there really isn't another instrument as similar to the human voice as a cello so I think some of the intonation hmm. and some that's of interesting I never thought of that but now that you bring that up that's a very very interesting point mm -hmm. I mean in the freedom of expression is just in your fingers as opposed to in your vocal cords right. and you, what I like about you from what I've read is is do you um, you like to take the opportunity to play with as many varied kinds of musicians as possible you know you're not sort of uh, uh, single-minded. You don't say this. It's, I just, just this or nothing. You enjoy all kinds of music. That's absolutely true. Um, I mean, I guess as long as I've been playing somewhat professionally, I would rarely turn down an opportunity to play with another person. And I think the majority of my opportunities as a solo artist for my individual career have come from backing another person up as a singer, as a pianist, regardless of the type of music. And mm -hmm. I mean, music is such a... I, I expect to spend the rest of my life as a student of music. Mm -hmm. And the more people you can play with, the more you learn, and it influences your own music and your sense of writing and performing. J.P. Sachs is our guest in the studio. You're going to be performing at the, this year's uh, Beaches Jazz Festival, the 25th annual Beaches Jazz Festival, preceding you by five years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, are you playing something tonight? I am. I'm at the Drake Underground Okay, tonight. you better say something about that, too. Yes. We're doing Doors at 7 p.m. It's uh, at the Drake Hotel. Mm -hmm. You go down the stairs. One of my favorite venues in the city. And I'm sharing the evening with a, a wonderful spoken word artist named David Deliska and a singer-artist uh, named Kai. So okay. the three of us are putting this night on together. Way to do it. Was it? I said that's the way to do it. You create your own event. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in chatting, chatting with you in, in a moment. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back from the break, I want to talk to you uh, about the, the time that you spent uh, at a local orphanage in Kenya. I'd be happy. I'm always happy to talk yeah, about that's, it. That's a pretty interesting. How long were you there for? I was there for three months. Okay. When we come back, we shall do that. We're going to hear a little bit more from... Uh, uh, JP's uh, acoustic EP, by the way, Joe, just uh, so you know, at the Drake Underground tonight. Did you say 7.30? Doors are at 7. Music will start around 7.45. Okay. And then you'll be at, uh, which, which night are you at the beaches? Uh, the morning of the 27th at Kew Gardens. The morning of the 27th at Kew Gardens. Okay, back with JP Sachs in just a moment. Right now it is 1.45 at Newstalk 10. Do you like Paul Simon? I love Paul Simon. I sound a little like Paul Simon in that song, and, and I mean that in a very complimentary way, both lyrically and, and vocally, because I'm a huge Paul Simon fan. No, I truly appreciate that. Actually, a little story about, I've always loved Paul Simon, and I think I used to get Dance to Sleep to Graceland, and it, to this day, is one of my favorite records so, of all One of the best lyrics in the world, and that's all on that album. Agree. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was, I lived in East Africa for three months, and at the end of that three months, um, my partner and I were in... Jinja, Uganda, and we had just gone rafting on the Nile River, and she got like horrible. St That's another story. Rafting on the Nile River is a dangerous thing to do. I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> aside from that, after that experience, we were in um, a wonderful woman we were staying with named Flo, who lived in the community in Jinja, who we met and ended up staying with, and we're watching this. We're watching this video on this old TV she has, and the soundtrack to the video is Under African Skies, off of Graceland. And I hadn't heard any music that from home, or music that I would listen to at home since I had been there. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really heard any radio or TV at all. And I'm listening to Under African Skies, and I'm thinking, this is what my last three months have felt like. This music sounds like the way I felt for the last three months. 
So you went down to uh, to Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, paid your own way, I understand. I did. Yes. Why? Not why you, why'd you pay your own way, but why did you go? What was the inspiration? Well, when I was in high school, um, I was in grade 10. So I was 15 when the trip started. Um, and Free the Children was an organization I was really involved in throughout high school. Mm -hmm. They do incredible work mobilizing sure. youth in, in high school. Um, and they offered a trip through my school to go to Kenya. And I thought, why not? And I went and had the most amazing 10 days. I turned 16 in Kenya. It was the happiest time of my life. So when I graduated high school, I, w I wanted to go back. So I took the year off. That's what I said. I said I was taking the year off from high school. <laughs> um, spent three months living there. And really, it, it was one of the most defining parts of my life. And then you uh, joined something called uh, Anton's Chair. Can you explain this to me? Actually, Anton's Chair was an idea that I had in Kenya. Okay. Um, I mean, and it's by no means a unique idea because it's, it's based on a principle that has existed within artists and musicians, I think, since there was artists and musicians, which is this idea that artists are at the forefront of social justice. And we have an incredible power with a voice that people want to listen to as musicians, it's, or especially as singers, our voice is sort of what our music is based on. But thinking about what our voice means and what we're conveying to other people and what we're inspiring in others to do is, personally, I think, extraordinarily important and something that the majority of my community also thinks is very important. So Anton's Chair was really the, the idea behind those musicians and those artists, whether they be actors or painters or or players, musical players, that they could come together under under one name, under one identity, and have a joint force, which is using that musical voice, that arts voice, for something bigger, a powerful cause. No, it's pretty cool. It's a collective, but how does it work? It's a collective in that we put on shows together. Okay, that's what we want. So tonight at the Drake Hotel is an Anton's Chair Present show. Okay. So all three of the artists are one that believe in the Anton's Chair philosophy, which is that you first you find your voice and then you find what it's for. Um, so the three artists tonight all share that mentality and we put on a number of shows last summer. It's about engaging the artists but also engaging supporters of causes and connecting them with the artists who are also supporting that cause. You were talking uh, before we uh, went to break about um, your late grandfather, who was uh, a world-class uh, cellist mm -hmm. and world-renowned, world-respected cellist. And you said to me during the break that you uh, that you lost him, that he passed uh, not long ago, and you were very, very close to him. You could tell that. You're planning a memorial for him. Yeah, my my mom and Michael Remini Remini owns a, a music store. Sure. Floor. Yeah, um, and he was very close to my grandfather and is a close family friend and. They're organizing a memorial on the 27th. I'm actually going from my beach's performance mm -hmm. to the memorial. And then anyone who's, who's listening who may know my grandfather who feels like he affected their life is welcome to, to look up the memorial if they type in Jan or Starker um, at Memorial in Toronto. They'll, they'll find it online. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice touch. So you're at uh, the Drake Underground tonight. Doors open at 7. Yes. Then on the twenty uh, seventh, they're at the beaches. Twenty seventh, is it? That's mm -hmm. it. That's uh, that's the Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, and, Saturday and show. And I'll, I'll be out there. Yes. Doing MC, and we'll have to, you know, you'll have to speak with me, do a cutaway there or something. Yes, we, we will. We'll talk some during yes, that we will. time, you know. For sure. And it's a nine, eight, nine piece band you have. Yeah. Okay. You gotta love that. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Here, have some of this. Here, uh, no, no Ted will show you how to sneeze. It yeah. is a nine-piece band of some of my best friends, yeah. and we're, we're starting at 11 a.m. That's right. You, you get to start the festival off one morning. That's cool. Yeah. That should be very nice. Um, you got the acoustic EP on, and uh, following this, uh, any big plans? Sure. Well, I'm in Toronto for another three weeks, and I'm going back to L.A. I spent two months in L.A. Um, making a record with a producer named Andy Rose, who... I feel very lucky to be working with really talented dude, mm -hmm. very soulful man. Um, and we did a six song together, and I'm going back in August to do a little bit more work with him and try and make some waves. And you also have these 
He has these unique videos on YouTube. YouTube. You're singing in your bedroom or something, or what is that? The living room. The living room. He's singing in his living room, and he's got multi-track background vocals. And he'll he, there's one with him doing a Beyonce song, <laughs> which is a trip. And he got it something like thirty-five thousand views there on that. <laughs> Not quite thirty-five, but I, I appreciate the optimism. Yeah, well, it looked it looked like a lot, an awful well, lot. But but you did did uh, different artists like that. Yeah, maybe after this show we'll have thirty-five thousand with everyone. Well, with looking it up. Ted's with influence your, with you, your listenership. You, you surpassed that already. <laughs> no, but they're really unique in, in how he does this. Yeah. It's just him and a laptop and the room full of background singing, him singing the lead vocal. That's cool. I have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I really do. I've really enjoyed meeting you. I've very much enjoyed meeting you as well, Ted. You come back. Come Thank back. You both. Here now, won't you come back? Come back when you've got um, more than three songs. I will. Well, there will be more than three songs uh, in the coming months. Okay. You are invited back. You know how to get a hold of Bill, and uh, we shall be here. Thank you. Coming up, the news, and then the amazing Race Canada, right here at News Talk 1010. From the News Talk 1010 Broadcast Center in downtown Toronto.